They're gone, Jack. All of them. The words cut through the bustling command center like a cold blade, silencing the room. Captain Jack Carter, standing amidst a sea of monitors and hurried military personnel, turned to face General Abrams, the weight of the statement sinking in. What do you mean gone? Jack's voice was steady, but his eyes betrayed the storm brewing within. Mars Outpost Delta was our first line of defense. General Abrams, a seasoned officer with decades of service, looked grim. The Zorgans didn't just attack the outpost, they obliterated it. No survivors. It was a massacre, Jack. And from the looks of it, they're just getting started. Jack clenched his jaw, the images of Mars Outpost Delta flashing in his mind. He had trained with many of those stationed there, some even considered friends. The thought of the outpost reduced to rubble, lifeless, ignited a fire within him. We need to act, and fast, Jack said, his resolve hardening. What's the strategy? The general motioned for Jack to follow him to a more secluded area of the command center, away from the prying ears of the rank and file. We have limited intel on the Zorgans. Their technology, their tactics, it's unlike anything we've faced before. But what we do know is that they're heading here next. Jack's mind raced. The Zorgans were no ordinary foe. Their sudden appearance in the solar system and the ease with which they had dispatched Mars outpost Delta spoke volumes of their capabilities. Humanity was on the brink, and the weight of the ensuing conflict rested on the shoulders of those like him. I'm assembling a response team, General Abrams continued, his gaze fixed on Jack. I need our best on this, and that includes you, Captain. You'll lead the team to gather intelligence on the Zorgan forces. We need to know what we're up against. Jack nodded, the gravity of the mission settling in. Who's on the team? The general handed Jack a tablet, displaying the profiles of selected personnel. You'll have Sergeant Riggs for demolitions, Lieutenant Hayes for reconnaissance, and a few others. Each one has been chosen for their skills and bravery. Time is of the essence, Jack. We need to move quickly. Jack scrolled through the profiles, each face a testament to the best humanity had to offer. He knew Sergeant Riggs well, a man whose expertise with explosives was matched only by his unwavering loyalty. Lieutenant Hayes, though younger, had proven herself time and again on the field. The team was solid, but the task ahead was daunting. Understood, General, Jack replied, the weight of command settling upon him. We'll be ready to move out within the hour. General Abrams placed a firm hand on Jack's shoulder. I know I don't need to tell you this, but the stakes couldn't be higher. The Zorgans have shown they have no regard for human life. We're not just fighting for territory here. We're fighting for our very survival. Jack met the general's gaze, his determination clear. We won't let you down, sir. We'll get you the intel you need, and we'll make those bastards pay for Mars Outpost Delta. With a final nod of acknowledgement, General Abrams turned back to the command center, leaving Jack to prepare for the mission ahead. As he walked away, Jack's thoughts were with his team, the task at hand, and the silent vow he made to those lost on Mars. We're coming for them, Jack muttered under his breath. A promise to the fallen and a declaration of the fierce resistance the Zorgans would face. This is just the beginning. Riggs, check your gear one last time. We leave in five, Captain Jack Carter instructed, his voice steady despite the underlying tension. The team, gathered in the dimly lit briefing room, exchanged solemn nods, each member aware of the gravity of their mission. Jack's team consisted of the finest soldiers, handpicked for their expertise and bravery. Sergeant Riggs, known for his proficiency with explosives, was crucial for their mission's success. Alongside them were Anderson, a communications specialist, and Lee, a sniper with unmatched precision. Their objective was clear. Infiltrate a Zorgan scout ship that had landed in the remote Arctic, gather intelligence, and, if possible, capture any Zorgan technology. The journey to the Arctic was fraught with challenges. The team had to navigate through treacherous terrain, avoiding detection by Zorgan patrols. 
As they approached the scout ship, hidden beneath the icy landscape, the scale of their task became apparent. The ship, a sleek metallic structure, was unlike anything humanity had encountered, its technology far advanced. Once inside, the team split up, with Anderson working to tap into the ship's communications, while Riggs set about planting charges, a precaution should they need a quick escape. Jack and Lee moved deeper into the ship, their footsteps silent on the cold metal floor. The interior of the scout ship was a labyrinth of corridors and rooms filled with alien technology. Jack's heart raced as they came across a room filled with maps and holographic displays, showing Earth and what appeared to be plans for an invasion. Among the documents, they discovered chilling evidence of a news organ weapon, a bioagent designed specifically to target human DNA. We need to get this information back to command, Jack whispered to Lee, his mind racing with the implications of their discovery. Lee nodded, her eyes scanning the room for any signs of Zorgan soldiers. As they retraced their steps to regroup with Anderson and Riggs, the ship suddenly came alive with alarms. Zorgan soldiers, alerted to their presence, began to converge on their location. The team, caught in the heart of the enemy ship, fought valiantly, their training kicking in as they engaged in a fierce firefight. Riggs, in a moment of quick thinking, detonated a series of charges, creating a diversion that allowed them to break through the encircling Zorgans. The explosion rocked the ship, throwing them off balance, but providing the opening they needed. With the Zorgan forces momentarily disoriented, Jack led his team in a desperate sprint towards their extraction point. Anderson, clutching the stolen data, was grimly determined, understanding the value of the intelligence they had gathered. As they emerged from the ship, the cold Arctic air hit them like a wave, a stark contrast to the stifling atmosphere inside. Their escape vehicle, hidden among the ice, was a welcome sight. As they boarded, Riggs, checking his gear for any signs of damage, turned to Jack. We got what we came for, Captain. But this is just the beginning, isn't it? Riggs asked his voice a mix of exhaustion and resolve. Jack, his mind already on the challenges ahead, nodded solemnly. Yes, Riggs. We've opened a door here today, but what lies beyond, it will test us like never before. The engine roared to life, and as the vehicle sped away from the scout ship, now a burning wreck behind them, Jack's thoughts were with his team and the uncertain future that awaited humanity. The covert operation had unfolded with success, but it was merely the first step in a much larger battle. Report to command as soon as we land. They need to know what we're up against, Jack instructed Anderson, his gaze fixed on the horizon, where the first light of dawn was breaking through the darkness. Anderson, understanding the urgency, nodded. Will do, Captain. Let's hope they're ready for what's coming. As the vehicle disappeared into the Arctic expanse, the team was silent, each member lost in their thoughts, aware that the real fight was just beginning. Captain Carter, we have an unidentified individual approaching our perimeter, reported Lieutenant Harris, his tone laced with caution. The United Forces' hidden base, nestled in a rugged mountain range, was on high alert after the successful Arctic mission. Jack, still processing the data they had retrieved, looked up from his workstation, his interest peaked. Can you identify them? Jack asked, standing up. The base's security was tight, and any approach was treated with suspicion, especially given the constant threat of Zorgan surveillance. It's complicated, sir. The individual claims to be a Zorgan defector and requests to speak directly with you, Harris replied his expression a mixture of disbelief and curiosity. Jack's mind raced at the implications. A Zorgan defector could provide invaluable intelligence, but it could also be a trap. Deciding the risk was worth the potential reward, he nodded. Bring them in, but keep them under strict watch. As the defector was escorted into the briefing room, Jack prepared himself for a confrontation. The figure before him, cloaked in a nondescript garment, seemed to be bracing for hostility. With a nod from Jack, the defector lowered their hood, revealing the unmistakable features of a Zorgan, her scales a muted shade of green, 
her eyes a penetrating yellow. I am Zara, she began, her voice firm despite the obvious tension. I was a scientist in the Zorgan military. I can no longer stand by as my people commit atrocities against yours. I want to help you. Jack studied her, trying to gauge her sincerity. Why should we trust you? You could be here to spy on us, to sabotage our efforts, he challenged, his stance guarded. Zara met his gaze, her eyes reflecting a turmoil that resonated with Jack's own experiences of war. I have seen what the war has done, the lives it has destroyed. I can provide you with information, weaknesses and the Zorgan strategies, but I ask for protection in return. The room was heavy with silence as Jack considered her offer. The risk of betrayal was high, but if Zara was telling the truth, her knowledge could shift the war's balance in humanity's favor. I'll say we believe you, Jack finally said, his tone cautious. What kind of information can you provide? And why defect now? Zara's posture stiffened as she delved into her reasons. She spoke of the Zorgan Empire's ruthless pursuit of dominance, the experiments on humans, and the planned biological attack that Jack's team had thwarted. Her decision to defect came after witnessing the lengths her people would go to ensure their supremacy, even at the cost of innocent lives. As Zara outlined the Zorgan's upcoming strategies and their vulnerabilities, Jack's skepticism began to wane. The details she provided aligned with the intelligence they had recently acquired, lending credence to her claims. Captain, I understand your hesitation, Zara continued, her voice underscored with urgency. But time is against us. The Zorgan Empire will not stop until Earth is under their control or annihilated. I chose to stand with those who fight for their home, for their right to exist. Jack weighed her words, the gravity of the decision before him not lost. Trusting Zara could be the key to saving countless lives, or it could be a devastating mistake. The war had taught him to be cautious, but it had also shown him the value of unexpected allies. After a moment of contemplation, Jack extended his hand, a gesture of conditional acceptance. We'll need to verify everything you've told us. Until then, you'll be under constant surveillance. Zara nodded, accepting the terms. I expected no less. Thank you, Captain Carter. I only hope my actions now can atone for the part I played in the Zorgan's war machine. As Zara was led away to a secure area for debriefing, Jack turned back to his team, their faces a mix of shock and wary optimism. The war had taken many turns, but none as unexpected as this. The path forward was fraught with uncertainty, but with Zara's defection, a new glimmer of hope emerged in the shadow of the looming Zorgan threat. Keep a close eye on her, Jack instructed his team, his mind already racing with the possibilities Zara's information could unlock. This could change everything. His second-in-command nodded, understanding the weight of the situation. Will do, Captain. Let's hope she's the real deal. Jack's gaze lingered on the door, through which Zara had exited, the weight of command heavy on his shoulders. For all our sakes, I hope so too. We've got one shot at this, Jack stated, eyeing the digital map projected in the center of the room. The room was filled with the core members of his team, along with Zara, who had proven her worth with the intelligence she'd provided. The map displayed the intricate layout of the Zorgan Research Facility, a fortress of alien technology hidden deep within the Amazon rainforest. Zara leaned forward, pointing at a series of ventilation shafts. These lead directly to the lower levels where the bioweapon is being developed. It's heavily guarded, but it's our best point of entry. Sergeant Riggs, who had been examining the layout, chimed in. We'll need to be quick and silent. I can rig the entrance with a quiet explosive, just enough to get us through without alerting the whole facility. Jack nodded, his mind racing through scenarios. Anderson, once we're in, we'll need calm silence. If they catch on to us, they'll lock the place down tight. Anderson, the communications specialist, acknowledged the order. I'll set up a jamming frequency. It won't hold for long, but it should give us enough time to get in and out. Lee, 
the team sniper, looked concerned. And if we run into heavy resistance, Jack met her gaze squarely. We do what we have to. Remember, the bioweapon can't leave that facility. No matter what. The team absorbed the gravity of his words, the weight of their mission settling in. Zara spoke up, her voice steady. I've accessed the facility's blueprints. There's a central control room here. She pointed to a section of the map. If we can reach it, I can disable the internal security systems, give us a bit more breathing room. Jack considered this, then nodded in agreement. Riggs, you and Zara head there. The rest of us will secure the weapon. The plan was bold, fraught with danger at every turn. The facility was a labyrinth of alien technology, much of it unfamiliar even to Zara. But it was the best chance they had to neutralize the threat once and for all. As the meeting adjourned, Riggs pulled Jack aside. Are we sure we can trust her? She was one of them, after all. Jack looked back at Zara, who was discussing the blueprints with Anderson. She's proven herself so far, and we need her intel. Keep an eye on her, but we're going to have to trust her on this one. Riggs nodded, though the worry didn't leave his eyes. Understood, Captain. I just hope we're not making a mistake. The next morning, as dawn broke over the dense canopy of the Amazon, the team geared up. Each member was acutely aware of the dangers that lay ahead. The mission was high risk, and there was no guarantee of success or survival. As they prepared to move out, Zara approached Jack, her expression solemn. I know what's at stake, she said quietly. I won't let you down. Jack studied her for a moment, then nodded. Let's make sure we all come back from this. With a final check of their gear, the team set out towards the Zorgan facility. The fate of humanity rested on their shoulders, and in the silent resolve of their steps, there was a shared determination to succeed, no matter the cost. As they disappeared into the lush foliage, Riggs fell in step beside Jack, his voice low. After this is over, what then? If we pull this off, we're not just soldiers anymore. We're heroes. Jack kept his eyes on the path ahead, his mind focused on the mission. Let's just focus on today, Riggs. One step at a time. Everyone, sync watches. We move on my mark, Jack whispered, his gaze fixed on the looming silhouette of the Zorgan Research Facility. Hidden by the dense foliage of the Amazon, the team, dressed in dark tactical gear, prepared for the infiltration. The night was eerily quiet, the sounds of the jungle muted under the tension of the impending operation. Riggs, crouched beside Jack, checked his compact explosive device one last time. Charges set for a silent breach. We'll have a small window before they notice the breach. Jack nodded, his focus unwavering. The team was well prepared each member aware of their role in the mission. Zara, despite her alien origins, had proven to be an invaluable asset, her knowledge of Zorgan technology guiding their approach. As the seconds ticked down, the team tensed, ready to spring into action. At Jack's signal, they moved, a silent shadow slipping through the underbrush towards the facility's outer perimeter. Riggs expertly placed the charge, and with a muted thump, the entrance was breached. The team slipped inside, their movements fluid and practiced. The interior of the facility was stark, illuminated by the cold glow of alien technology. Zara led the way, her familiarity with the layout guiding them through the maze of corridors. They encountered minimal resistance, the few Zorgan guards easily subdued, a testament to the team's skill and Zara's strategic planning. As they delved deeper into the heart of the facility, the true horror of what the Zorgans were doing became apparent. They stumbled upon a vast laboratory, its center dominated by large tanks filled with a strange, luminescent liquid. Suspended within were human figures, their bodies grotesquely altered by Zorgan experimentation. Jack's heart clenched at the sight, a mix of anger and sorrow flooding his senses. Document everything. We'll need evidence of their atrocities, he ordered his voice barely a whisper. Anderson, 
The communications specialist began recording, his hands steady despite the grim scene before them. It was then that Jack's gaze fell upon a particular tank, a jolt of recognition hitting him like a physical blow. Mike. Jack breathed, disbelief and horror mingling in his voice. The figure suspended in the tank bore the unmistakable features of his brother. Though twisted by the Zorgan's vile experiments, the team rallied around Jack, their expressions a mirror of his shock. Zara, her face etched with sympathy, placed a hand on his shoulder. We must move, Captain. We can't let his sacrifice be in vain. With renewed determination, the team pressed on, driven by the need to stop the Zorgans and honor those they had lost. They reached the heart of the facility, where the bioweapon was stored. A sinister device pulsating with an ominous energy. Riggs set to work, placing charges around the weapon. While Zara accessed a nearby console, her fingers flying over the alien symbols. The facility's alarms began to blare, a harsh, dissonant sound that signaled their discovery. We have to hurry, Lee called out, her rifle trained on the entrance as Zorgan soldiers began to pour in. The team fought with desperate intensity, their resolve hardened by the horrors they had witnessed. As the charges were set, Jack made a split-second decision. Take Mike with us. We're not leaving him here, he commanded, his voice leaving no room for argument. As the team made their escape, the facility behind them erupted in a silent explosion. The bioweapon destroyed, its threat neutralized. They emerged into the night, battered but victorious, their mission accomplished, but at a great personal cost. As they made their way back to their extraction point, Jack walked beside Zara, his thoughts heavy. We've struck a blow today, but the war is far from over. Zara nodded, her gaze fixed on the path ahead. Together, we'll see it through to the end, Captain. For Earth, for your brother, for all those we've lost. Their conversation was a quiet pact, an acknowledgement of the long road ahead and the sacrifices that lay in wait. But for now, they had achieved their objective, and in their hearts, there was a flicker of hope, a belief that victory, no matter how distant, was possible. The sound of alarms pierced the air as Jack and his team, carrying the unconscious form of Mike, made a desperate dash through the collapsing corridors of the Zorgan facility. The explosion Riggs had set off was doing its job, but the structure was coming apart faster than they had anticipated. Captain, we have multiple hostiles incoming, Lee shouted, her voice tense as she provided cover fire, keeping the Zorgan soldiers at bay. The team was making progress, but every step forward was hard fought against the relentless pursuit of the enemy. Jack glanced down at Mike, his brother's face barely recognizable beneath the scars and alterations inflicted by the Zorgans. The weight of his brother in his arms was a stark reminder of the stakes of their mission. We need to move faster, Jack urged, his voice laced with a mix of determination and concern. As they neared the exit, a massive explosion rocked the facility, sending shockwaves through the corridors and throwing the team off their feet. Debris rained down, and for a moment, the world was nothing but noise and chaos. When the dust settled, Jack realized Mike was no longer in his grasp. He frantically searched the debris-strewn floor until he found Mike, who had somehow managed to regain consciousness amidst the turmoil. Jack. Mike's voice was weak, but there was a firm resolve in his eyes that Jack hadn't seen in years. You need to go. Get the team out. Jack shook his head vehemently, refusing to accept what Mike was implying. No, we're getting out of here together. Just hold on. Mike managed a pained smile, his hand gripping a grenade he must have taken from Riggs' pack. I've been dead since they took me, Jack. This. This is my chance to make it right. To save others from my fate. Jack's protests were drowned out by another explosion, closer this time. The Zorgan soldiers were almost upon them, their alien shouts filling the air with menace. Please, Mike implored, his gaze locking with Jack's, conveying a silent plea for understanding. Let me do this. For you, for the team, for Earth. 
The realization of what needed to be done settled heavily on Jack's shoulders. The mission, their comrades' lives, the countless innocents at risk. If the bioweapon had been unleashed it all hinged on this moment. With a heavy heart, Jack nodded, tears blurring his vision. You were always the brave one, Mike. Make it count. Mike's final act was one of supreme courage. As Jack and the team retreated, he charged towards the oncoming Zorgan soldiers, the grenade clenched in his fist. His shout of defiance was the last thing Jack heard before the world erupted in light and sound. The explosion tore through the Zorgan ranks, buying Jack and his team the precious seconds they needed to escape the crumbling facility. As they emerged into the night, the loss of Mike weighed heavily on them all, a painful void that words could not fill. Back at the extraction point, with the sounds of the battle behind them, Riggs approached Jack, his expression somber. He saved us all, Jack. Mike. He was a hero. Jack, his gaze lost to the horizon, replied in a voice barely above a whisper. He was my brother. And I'm going to make sure the world knows what he did here today. In the silence that followed, the team's resolve solidified. Mike's sacrifice would not be in vain. They would continue the fight, carrying the memory of his bravery with them as a beacon of hope in the darkest of times. The helicopter blades cut through the air with a steady hum, a stark contrast to the silence that enveloped Jack and his team as they made their way back to the base. The weight of their return was palpable, the absence of Mike casting a long shadow over what should have been a triumphant moment. As they landed, the team was met with a mixture of relief and somber respect from their comrades. They had achieved their objective, destroying the bioweapon and securing vital intelligence on the Zorgans, but at a cost that was all too visible in their haunted expressions. Jack stepped off the helicopter, his legs carrying him more out of habit than conscious thought. The base commander approached, his face etched with concern. You did well, Jack. The world owes you and your team a debt of gratitude. Jack nodded, the words barely registering. His mind was replaying the moment of Mike's sacrifice, the sound of the explosion echoing in his ears. We paid a high price, Jack finally responded, his voice hollow. In the days that followed, Jack found himself adrift in a sea of grief and guilt. The base had organized a memorial for Mike and the others who had fallen, their names added to a growing list of heroes who had given their lives in the fight against the Zorgans. As Jack stood before the memorial, the faces of his fallen comrades, staring back at him from the photographs that lined the wall, he couldn't shake the feeling that he had failed them. Mike had died to save them, and Jack was left to question whether it was worth it. You can't carry this alone, Jack, Lee said, joining him in front of the memorial. Her voice was gentle, but there was a firmness to it that made him look at her. Jack shook his head, the weight of leadership feeling heavier than ever. I was supposed to protect them, Lee, to bring them back, and Mike. Lee placed a hand on his shoulder, her gaze meeting his. Mike made his choice, Jack. He knew the stakes, and he chose to protect his team, his family. You would have done the same. Her words were meant to comfort, but they only served to highlight the burden Jack felt. He was the captain, the one who made the tough calls, and yet, in that crucial moment, it had been Mike who had made the ultimate sacrifice. The team tried to rally around Jack, sharing stories of their fallen brother, each anecdote a testament to Mike's courage and spirit. But for Jack, the laughter felt forced, the memories bittersweet reminders of what had been lost. As the days turned into weeks, Jack threw himself into the planning for the next phase of their operation against the Zorgans. It was easier to lose himself in maps and strategy than to face the silence of his quarters, where Mike's absence was a palpable presence. One evening, as Jack sat alone, poring over reports, Riggs approached him, a hesitant expression on his face. Jack, you need to talk about it. About Mike. Keeping it all inside. It's eating you up. Jack looked up, the weariness in his eyes belying the stoic facade he had maintained. I keep thinking there was something more I could have done, Riggs that I could have saved him. 
Riggs pulled up a chair, his demeanor serious. You did everything you could, Jack. We all did. Mike's choice. It was his own. And it saved us all. You can't blame yourself for that. The conversation stretched into the night, Jack slowly opening up about his guilt and grief. It was a small step, but it was the beginning of the healing process, a chance to reflect on the sacrifices made and the battles still to come. As Riggs finally stood to leave, he paused, looking back at Jack with a knowing smile. Mike was proud of you, you know. He always was. And he'd kick your ass for moping around like this. A ghost of a smile flickered across Jack's face, the first genuine one in weeks. Yeah, he probably would. The Zorgans are advancing faster than we anticipated. This might be our last stand, Jack declared, his eyes scanning the room filled with the remnants of Earth's defense forces. The atmosphere was charged with a palpable sense of urgency, as soldiers and strategists alike prepared for the inevitable confrontation. Zara, now fully integrated into the team and respected for her invaluable insights, nodded in agreement. The intel I've provided should give us a slight advantage. We know their tactics, their weaknesses. It's time to use that knowledge to our benefit. Jack's plan was audacious, a direct assault on the Zorgan flagship poised above Earth's atmosphere. The risks were monumental, but the alternative of full-scale invasion of Earth was unthinkable. We strike at dawn. Riggs, Lee Anderson, you're with me. Zara, you'll coordinate our ground defenses. We hold them off long enough to breach their flagship and deliver a crippling blow. The team dispersed, each member moving with a resolve forged in the fires of countless battles. They were outnumbered and outgunned, but they had something the Zorgans lacked. A reason to fight beyond conquest, a home to defend. As dawn broke, the skies darkened with the shadow of the Zorgan Armada. Jack and his team, aboard a stealth shuttle, approached the flagship. The silence was oppressive, broken only by the occasional crackle of comms. Approaching target. Ready on your mark, Captain, Riggs whispered, his hand steady on the detonator that would open their path into the enemy vessel. Jack gave the signal, and with a muted explosion, they breached the hull of the Zorgan flagship. The interior was a labyrinth of alien technology, but they pressed forward, guided by Zara's intel and their own indomitable will. The resistance they faced was fierce. Zorgan soldiers, their armor gleaming with a sinister sheen, met them at every turn. But Jack's team was relentless, driven by the knowledge that the fate of their world hung in the balance. We need to reach the main control room. That's where we'll do the most damage, Jack instructed his voice calm amid the chaos. They fought their way through the corridors, every step contested by the desperate fury of the Zorgan defenders. As they neared their objective, the intensity of the battle reached a crescendo, the air thick with the sound of gunfire and the smell of scorched metal. Then they were there, standing before the entrance to the control room. Jack turned to his team, his expression grim. This is it. Whatever happens next, Know that I couldn't have asked for a better team to fight alongside. For Earth. The door to the control room slid open, revealing the heart of the Zorgan war machine. Inside, the Zorgan commander awaited, his presence dominating the room. You are too late, human. Your world will fall, the commander intoned, his voice cold with the certainty of victory. Jack met the commander's gaze, his own resolve unwavering. We'll see about that. The ensuing battle was a blur of motion and violence. Jack and his team fought with a desperation born of knowing this was the end game. And then, with a final decisive move, Jack faced the commander, their struggle a microcosm of the larger war raging beyond the walls of the flagship. As the commander fell defeated, Jack moved to the control panel, initiating the sequence that would send the flagship and the Zorgan fleet into disarray. The victory was within grasp, but the cost was clear in the weary faces of his team. As they made their way back to the shuttle, the flagship beginning to implode around them, Jack glanced back at the chaos they had wrought. Let's go home. Riggs, 
his face smeared with grime and blood, managed a tired grin. After you, Captain. We need to address the elephant in the room. General Steele's voice cut through the post-mission debrief, his gaze fixed on Jack with an intensity that bordered on accusation. The atmosphere in the room, already tense from the recounting of their near-suicidal mission, thickened further. Jack, still grappling with the mix of relief and lingering adrenaline from their successful but harrowing assault on the Zorgan flagship, met Steele's gaze squarely. And what would that be, General? Steele rose from his seat, his stature imposing, as he began to pace the room. Your reliance on Zara, a Zorgan, our enemy, he stated bluntly, his disdain for the alliance Jack had formed with the defector evident in his tone. Jack's patience, worn thin from the mission's emotional and physical toll, began to fray. Zara's intel was crucial to our success. Without her, we wouldn't have made it out, let alone struck a blow against the Zorgans. The murmurs among the gathered military personnel hinted at the division Zara's presence and her role in the operation had sown. Some viewed her as a valuable asset, a source of unparalleled inside information. Others, like Steele, saw only betrayal waiting to happen. Intel or not, you've compromised our security by bringing her into the fold. Who's to say she won't turn on us, given the chance? Steele's accusation hung in the air, a challenge that demanded an answer. Jack's response was measured, despite the growing anger at the insinuation that he had endangered their cause. She's risked everything to help us. To turn her back on her own kind, that's not something you do lightly. The tension escalated as Steele stopped pacing, turning to face Jack fully or it's the perfect cover for a spy. We should be taking the fight to the Zorgans, not sitting here debating the loyalty of one of their own. The argument was spiraling, the room dividing into camps as old prejudices and fears surfaced. It was then that Zara herself entered, her timing impeccable or unfortunate, depending on one's perspective. The room fell silent at her arrival, all eyes turning to the Zorgan defector who had become the focal point of the controversy. Her expression was one of calm resolve, though the undercurrent of tension did not escape her. General Steele, I understand your concerns, Zara began, her voice clear and composed. But I assure you, my only intention is to see the end of this war, to save both our peoples from further destruction. Steele's response was immediate, his skepticism undiminished. Pretty words from a pretty traitor. How can we trust the word of a Zorgan? The confrontation was on the verge of escalating further when Jack intervened, his voice commanding attention. Enough, General. Zara has proven herself time and again. Her actions have spoken louder than her words. The standoff continued, a palpable tension between Jack and Steele, each representing opposing viewpoints on how to proceed in the war against the Zorgans. It was a microcosm of the larger struggle within the military leadership, torn between the desire for outright vengeance and the more cautious approach Jack advocated, based on strategic alliances and intelligence. As the meeting adjourned, with no resolution in sight, Steele approached Jack, his voice low and menacing. You're playing a dangerous game, Captain. One that could cost us everything. Jack, undeterred met the general's gaze with unwavering conviction. It's a game we can't afford to lose, general. And I'll use every asset we have, Zara included, to make sure we don't. With that, Jack left the room, Zara at his side, the weight of their next moves heavy on their shoulders. The battle against the Zorgans was far from over, and the internal divisions only added to the challenge. But for Jack, the path forward, however fraught with betrayal and confrontation, was clear. Jack and Zara stood on the edge of the precipice. The vast expanse of the Zorgan mothership sprawled out before them, its intricate network of corridors and chambers pulsating with alien energy. The final phase of their plan was in motion, the culmination of their shared efforts and the embodiment of a fragile hope for peace. We're almost there, Zara whispered her eyes fixed on the central core room where the fate of two worlds would be decided. 
The weight of the moment was not lost on either of them. The knowledge of what was required hanging heavily in the air. Jack nodded, his resolve stealing as he checked his weapon one last time. Once we're in, it's going to get heated. Are you ready for this? Zara met his gaze, her own determination clear. I've never been more ready. Let's end this war, Jack. Their plan was simple yet fraught with peril. Infiltrate the core, upload the virus Zara had crafted to cripple the Zorgan fleet, and escape before the inevitable collapse. The simplicity of the plan belied the complexity of its execution, each step fraught with danger from both the ship's defenses and its inhabitants. As they made their way through the labyrinthine passageways, their progress was marked by sporadic skirmishes with Zorgan guards. Jack and Zara moved with a practiced efficiency, their partnership honed through countless hours of planning and preparation. The core room loomed ahead, a daunting gate guarded by the elite of the Zorgan forces. Jack exchanged a glance with Zara, a silent acknowledgement of the challenge they faced. With a nod, they sprang into action their assault a whirlwind of precision and ferocity that took the defenders by surprise. The battle was intense, the air crackling with the discharge of energy weapons and the harsh clang of metal on metal. But through sheer grit and determination, Jack and Zara fought their way to the entrance of the core room. Inside, the heart of the Zorgan war machine lay exposed, a complex array of devices and conduits that powered the massive ship and its deadly fleet. Zara moved quickly to a console, her fingers dancing over the controls as she initiated the upload of the virus. Jack stood guard, his weapon at the ready, as the upload progress bar inched forward. The ship seemed to sense the impending threat, its internal defenses coming alive in a desperate attempt to thwart their efforts. We're almost there, Zara said, her focus unbroken despite the chaos erupting around them. Just a little longer. But fate, it seemed, had other plans. A sudden explosion rocked the core room, a direct hit from the ship's internal defenses. Jack was thrown to the ground, his vision blurred by the impact. As he struggled to his feet, he saw Zara. Her figure slumped over the console, the progress bar on the screen agonizingly close to completion. Zara, he shouted, his voice raw with fear and urgency. Zara looked up her face pale, a trickle of blood at the corner of her mouth. I'm fine, she lied, her voice weak. Finish it, Jack, for both our peoples. Jack moved to her side, his hands taking over the controls, his heart pounding as he willed the progress bar to complete its journey. And then, with a final beep, the screen flashed green. The virus was unleashed, its digital tendrils spreading through the ship's systems with devastating effect. The ship began to shudder, its internal structures failing as the virus did its work. Jack turned to Zara, ready to make their escape, but her eyes told him all he needed to know. She wouldn't be making the journey back. No, Jack protested, his voice breaking. We can make it, Zara. We can. Zara shook her head, a sad smile on her lips. This is where my journey ends, Jack. But you need to go. Tell our story. Make sure this sacrifice wasn't in vain. Jack's eyes filled with tears, the realization of what was to come crashing down on him. I won't forget you, Zara. I promise. With one last look, Jack turned and ran, the ship collapsing around him as he made his desperate escape. Behind him, Zara watched her heart filled with a bittersweet mix of sorrow and hope. As Jack's shuttle cleared the dying ship, he looked back, whispering a silent goodbye to the brave Zorgan who had become his ally, his friend. We did it, Zara. We brought hope.